<laughs> this may be a little bit overkill. So right now, this is my office slash gaming setup at home. You've probably seen it. It's in the background of all my videos. And front and center is this guy. It's my massive ultra wide monitor. It's the LG 38WN. 95C, I think that's right. And it's beautiful, I love this thing. It's 38 inches, it's ultra wide, it's quad HD+, plus, uh, 144 hertz, HDR, G-Sync. It ticks all the boxes for me for uh, whether I'm sort of gaming or video editing. But it's not cheap. This thing will set you back about 1500 pounds, which is the same price as one of these guys. It's the 48 inch LG C10 OLED. And you can probably guess where this is going. Into my face, apparently. <laughs> So the idea of using a TV as a monitor isn't exactly a new one, but there's been a couple of big changes recently which has made me reconsider. The first one being the fact that we can now get a 48 inch OLED. This is the C10 and it's the smallest OLED you've ever been able to buy. Normally they're 55, 65 inches. The second reason is this. <laughs> this is a brand new RTX 3080 from NVIDIA. This is the ASUS Tough Gaming version. And if you saw my review from a couple of days ago, uh, where I tested out the Founders Edition version of this, then you'll know that it's a pretty impressive bit of kit. And actually not only in terms of performance, because while in some cases I measured this uh, to be about twice as fast as the previous RTX 2080, for me, it's actually uh, what's on the end of it, which makes this a lot more interesting. And it all comes down to this little guy. It's the new HDMI 2.1 port. Uh, these are the first graphics cards to support it. And as you can probably guess, so does this TV, which means I'll be able to put this in my PC, connect it up to the back of the TV with just one cable, and I'll get full 4K 120. And it'll also support things like G-Sync over that as well. So this really kind of unlocks the full potential of this TV in terms of gaming and also just as a PC monitor generally. And here it is. First impressions, well, it's bigger than I expected, I have to say. Uh, I mean, I'm used to a pretty big 38 inch ultra wide here already, but uh, it's kind of hard to imagine what a 48 inch TV is gonna look like on your desk until it's right in front of you. So this is a pretty big display. I mean, it's gorgeous, especially with this full 4K resolution, which of course won't be as sharp uh, as if you were to go with a regular, say 27 or 32 inch 4K monitor because you've got a lower pixel per inch density, but even this close up, it looks incredibly sharp. First thing I noticed though was it is reflective, unlike most PC monitors, uh, which are matte, this obviously is glossy. Uh, this particular model has an anti-reflective coating, but I can still see some of my windows and lights in the background. Aside from that, well, it's just <laughs> incredible. And as soon as you fire up something, I don't know, like Premiere Pro here, this is where I spend most of my life, it's just incredible. I hate to use the cliche, but the amount of screen real estate you get with it is just phenomenal. Also, because it is 4K, I can watch my content back natively, which helps when it comes to editing. And if you are, I don't know, at the next level and you're filming and editing in high dynamic range, then you can, of course, use this HDR display to uh, sort of color correct that properly. What you can do and what I would recommend is going into the display settings and changing the scaling because by default it's at 300%, <laughs> which isn't ideal. So I found that 150 is quite nice and therefore gives me enough room, but everything's big enough that I can still see it. The other thing you should do firstly, of course, is jump into your control panel. I'm obviously using the NVIDIA 3080 here. Go to PC and you can see here, I've got 3840 by 2160, a 120 Hertz refresh rate. We've got 10 bit color depth. We've got RGB output color and also full dynamic range. And actually one of the best things about using a TV as a monitor is you get some pretty incredible HDR. So if you're playing games or watching HDR content, maybe on YouTube or on Netflix, paired with the OLED panel, which just gives you crazy contrast, everything on this looks incredible. It's quite handy as well that when you do just turn it on, as I just changed some settings here, it uses the instant game response. So it detects the HDMI and puts me in game mode, which has the lowest response time, the lowest input lag, which of course is very handy for gaming. Uh, and also you'd have seen a little HDR logo at the top there. So this is HDR enabled. 
I fired up a bit of Call of Duty, and at 4K maximum graphic settings, I'm getting over 100 FPS uh, with the 3080, which is pretty incredible, and that's with ray tracing on as well. So I guess that is worth considering that if you are thinking about maybe uh, investing in a TV like this for a monitor, make sure you have a powerful enough PC to really take advantage of it. So having that 120Hz refresh, the low response time, G-Sync and FreeSync, and we also get some of the best HDR if you're playing a game that supports it, this really does tick all the boxes. And while in this video I'm talking about using it with my PC, of course it's also perfect for the upcoming PS5 and Xbox Series X, which also use HDMI 2.1. And of course, if you do get bored with using a PC, then you also have, you know, a TV. And while obviously you can get most of these apps through the web browser anyway, there's a few extras, maybe like, I don't know, Apple TV, uh, Sky Store, or Disney Plus. So if you just want to, you know, kick back and watch a movie afterwards, then that's pretty nice as well. So far, so good then, but I know what you're thinking because, well, I have the same concerns. What about burn-in or screen retention? If you are, say, editing or gaming and you have the same sort of HUD elements for hours and hours and hours every single day, then that is something that you maybe have to think about. Now, there are a couple of ways the TV mitigates the risk of burn-in. By default, we have auto power off set to four hours, although I've changed that to two hours. The TV also has screen shift turned on by default, which ever so slightly moves the picture to reduce the risk. And what you can also do in the Windows Power Options is change the screen's sleep time to just 5 or 10 minutes. Also, reducing the screen brightness and maybe hiding the taskbar can help lower the risk. If you are worried about OLED burning, then you may actually want to consider uh, Samsung's QLED option. The Q80T, I believe, comes in a 49-inch version, so that's kind of like the QLED equivalent of this. And of course, not being OLED, you don't have to worry about that, but I quite like the fact that this is OLED and those sort of crazy contrast ratios and deep blacks that you get with this. One issue I have noticed, though, is the automatic brightness limiter. And so when a sudden bright image pops up, the screen slightly dims. It is noticeable and slightly annoying, but I don't think it's a deal breaker for me, and the benefits of the almost infinite contrast of OLED far outweighs this in my opinion. So I must admit this is probably still for a very niche audience, it is very expensive at about £1,500, and also you're probably going to want to pair it with one of the new graphics cards to get that HDMI 2.1, uh, so that's not cheap, this is definitely a high-end setup, but with the fact that we now have a smaller 48-inch OLED option, and also Samsung's 49-inch QLED option, plus HDMI 2.1, well it just feels like a proper next-gen setup. But what would you go for? The ultra-wide which I had, or this 48-inch TV? Let me know in the comments below. I will probably keep this setup for a while now, and I will update you in a few weeks or a month or so with I don't know, screen burning issues, if there's any of that, and also just my extended experiences. I'll probably do a whole studio setup. So stay tuned, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. A big thanks to LG for sending this TV out for me to play with, although it's not a sponsored video. And I'll also put links to both this TV and the monitor, and also the graphics card I'm using in the description below if you wanna check them out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.